Here at the Save It For Parts channel, one of our mottos is bringing you last year's technology today. And that mainly says that I'm not an early adopter. I don't like going out and paying full price for brand new gadgets. I like finding stuff when they're a little bit older, uh, getting stuff from surplus sales at auctions, or preferably pulling the stuff out of dumpsters. Now recently I've been playing around with the PrinterBot 3D printer, my first 3D printer, uh, only a decade late. This thing is from 2012, it's now 2022, so I'm slightly behind the times with this uh, newfangled 3D printing technology. However, I've now just upgraded to 2014 printer technology. Okay, so what I apparently have here is a MakerBot Replicator Mini, which uh, looks like it came from Home Depot. I actually didn't know Home Depot sold 3D printers, but uh, I guess they did in 2012. So let's uh, unbox this, see what we've got, and see if it even works. Now I got this at a surplus auction for about $100. I don't know yet if that's a good deal or not. Definitely some loose parts in the package here. Nope, there's some more loose stuff in here. Well, looks like we've got some filament with it. Uh, looks like uh, clear PLA here. All right. <clears throat> There's our printer. So this definitely looks a little more professional and legitimate than that uh, printer bot thing. Although, again, I don't know if it works. It's pretty dirty. There's like a cat whisker in here and lots of dust and a lot of these parts are just loose. Um, I think this is the extruder head. Not sure if it's supposed to be uh, liquid cooled or something because there's some kind of like little water pipe in here. Uh, I don't know what that is. Some extra guards. And then of course since this is second hand from a surplus auction there's absolutely no documentation, no manual, no software. So we're going to have to find all that stuff ourselves. Now it did come with two rolls of the plastic stuff here although this particular cartridge looks like it won't fit so this might be for a different printer entirely. Now comparing the replicator side by side with my old kit built second hand uh, printer bot, it definitely has a smaller print area on this new one. I probably won't be able to print things that are as large. Hey look, I finally have a use for all those USB-B cables that I have kicking around. I think everybody I know has like 38 of those cables and no devices that actually still use them. Okay, I've cleaned out some of the cat hair, which I don't know why because I have two cats so this is going to be packed full of cat hair almost instantaneously. I'm putting these protective doors back on. I guess they don't actually want you to stick your hand in there during the print process and flick away a little extra bits of plastic. I was definitely doing that a lot with this guy. Now I just need to get the old MakerBot desktop software installed and then update some firmware and load up a 3D file. Now some of the reviews I read said MakerBot desktop will pop up a little walkthrough guide for your first time but that never happened so as usual I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just gonna blindly hit the print button. And the print has immediately failed. So, yeah, that walkthrough could have been helpful. Um, I did learn that this little tube isn't actually for water cooling. It, I guess, guides the filament. All right, it looks like it's going in. And it's coming out kind of everywhere. Oops. See, you do have to reach in there and pull out random plastic. Same as the other one. All right, let's try it again. And boy, howdy, this thing is noisy. Wow, that thing is like 300% louder than the old model I have. I would definitely not want to use this in my house. It might just live in the garage forever. All right, it keeps running into filament jams, but it's still trying to print. Okay, so now it seems to have not only jammed the filament, but it's lost its position entirely, and it's, it's attempting to print more layers kind of off to the side of the original base layers. I think something's wrong with it. Uh, we're going to cancel this and try it again. So I tend to think that the end of the world will come about not from nuclear war, not from alien invasion. It's going to be when somebody buys a $100 discount nano machine on Amazon and just hits go without looking at the settings, without checking if it has uh, don't turn the world into paper clips enabled or not. And uh, yeah, those, those first generation nano machines, when they come out, they're going to have all kinds of safety protocols, all kinds of fail safes. By the time the discount ones show up uh, imported for a hundred bucks, it's going to be paper clips all the way down. Okay, I'm attempting to do a factory reset on this thing, and much like the firmware update, there's no status uh, on the software. There's nothing telling you what the status of the printer is, there's nothing telling you what it's doing. Uh, if I try to click print, it just says the printer's busy, but there's really, it's a, not a very transparent system here. I kind of liked that uh, printer bot that just had console outputs. It told you 
everything the printer was doing, even if I didn't understand them. This MakerBot software, it's it's too simplified. It's it's too mysterious. I so far I really don't like it. I'm also a little upset that this thing comes with a seemingly proprietary filament that's a different size than this other one. I have tons of filament for this guy. This thing came with one spool and then another spool that doesn't even fit in it. So I'm going to have to shell out actual money if I want to keep feeding this thing. So far, the slightly derpy one made out of plywood is seeming like a better deal than the consumer model. All right, I guess it's still doing a factory reset like 20 minutes later. I really have no idea what's going on with this thing. I don't know if I should just unplug it all. I don't know if I'm just supposed to wait until it says it's not busy anymore. There's no useful information in this software. Huh, it's still busy after like half an hour. Seriously, how long does a factory reset take? I am not thinking highly of MakerBot uh, products right now. I don't think I'd ever buy a new one if this is how uh, poorly they work. I'm glad I didn't pay full price for this one. I did finally get the quick start guide to come up by closing the software and reopening it. Although, of course, as soon as I start thinking I'm going to enjoy a feature, it breaks right away. This extruder heating screen has just been stuck here for like 10-15 minutes now with nothing happening. And it's definitely not heating at all. Okay, I've, I've restarted everything. I've restarted the printer, restarted the software. It's made its happy little beepy noises. I'm trying to print another model, but I'm still getting that mysterious printer is busy message. Googling around, it seems like this is a common problem, and people have actually had to return their printers for it. So from what I'm reading online, it doesn't really seem like MakerBot products are all that good. So I probably should have done more research on this before I just started throwing money at auctions. So some folks online said MakerBot Desktop 3.6 actually works better than the latest version, which I have now. So I'm going to delete that latest version, roll back to 3.6. Yeah, these MakerBot programmers do not seem to believe in progress bars. I don't think I've seen a functional progress bar yet in anything relating to this software. All right, I finally got it to do something different. What I ended up having to do was go down to monitor, and even though cancel seemed like it was grayed out, I, I clicked cancel, and it canceled whatever it was doing. It wasn't actually doing anything, but uh, it thought it was. And this is with oh, new software, multiple reboots, and I don't know. It, uh, yeah, the interface on this thing is just atrocious. And the extruder has failed. Well, so far I don't have much good to say about this MakerBot Replicator Mini. It doesn't work very well. It's crazy loud. Um, the software is pretty horrendous. The status information is little to non-existent. Um, yeah, I could understand if it had some issues because I got it used, but... It seems like everything is functionally there, it just never functioned very well to start with. Even when it is supposedly working, it has these filament jams every 20 seconds. It's also supposed to have this little web camera. That worked for the first try, and now it seems to have died as well. It's also been spending a lot of time kind of printing off the print area. I don't know if it's trying to clear its filament or what its problem is. So it just keeps jamming over and over and over. I'm going to try to reload the filament here. Maybe I should get rid of the little aquarium bubbler tube here and see if that feeds better. Some more MakerBot progress bar shenanigans. They uh, seem to think that 5 minutes is 10% of 90 minutes. That seems legit. That looks super messy in there. I do not have high hopes for the quality of this print. This one even smells worse than the antique one. It's definitely not an indoor printer. It is working a lot better with the fish tank parts removed. It's gone a whole 20 minutes without a filament jam, where before it would only make it 20 seconds. We're over an hour and a half into this print, and the progress bar continues to have no basis in reality. All right, our print is done. Let's see what we've got. So I didn't realize I was printing a raft onto this thing. Um, the raft seems to have not really worked at all because part of it popped up and delaminated from the blue tapes. So this entire section of our print was too close to the print head and got a little melted. I don't know how to get a raft off of a print. I guess you just kind of plat it and crumble it and make a giant mess. We've got uh, the MakerBot Stargate here on the left, and we've got the PrinterBot Stargate on the right. This one also had some issues with the print head being too close and kind of melting it a little bit, but um, they look pretty similar. I don't know. I guess this one has a little bit more detail on part of it, but then the other part, it really looks the same. It's just as melted. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, definitely the raft was counterproductive. 
Once I finally get this stupid thing to work, it prints about as good a quality as this one that's made out of plywood. We can't select a different quality, and we have to do the raft. Um, let's try advanced options. Uh, let's say high quality. High quality is still stuck at standard. Yeah, okay, there is no such thing as high quality. Can we do low quality? Nope, that doesn't exist either. More fantastic features from the MakerBot software team. All right, so on this print, um, again, this one is from the MakerBot, and the black one is from our printer bot. Uh, the MakerBot figure is actually a little better. The layers are much smaller, so the uh, quality is a little bit better. We still have a lot of this stringy stuff on both models. Um, still have a little bit of delamination along the bottom, although it's much worse uh, from the printer bot printer. So, yeah, this actually came out a little bit better. This guy does seem to be a little bit better on taller models or more complex models. I still think that one's better for big flat shapes. Um, it did our Stargate better, and uh, this one just did our little vertical model better. So maybe each of these printers has their own purpose or things that they're better at. All right, let's wrap up this stupid video. This didn't start out as a review. It was more just a, hey, look at this new 3D printer I got. Is it any better than the old 3D printer? Um, but it's turned into a very strong dislike for MakerBot. Uh, I do have to give it like two out of five stars. It was able to print some stuff eventually. It took all day to get the darn thing to work and a lot of screwing around, a lot of just mysterious stuff in the software that has absolutely no explanation, no detail. Yeah, whoever they hired to design the software had like no ability to do quality control or user interface or anything like that. So software on the MakerBot, terrible. Hardware, noisy frustrating, eventually kind of works a little bit. At least I got some prints out of it that I was able to salvage with a hot knife. I'll still keep the thing. I'm not going to like rely on it and I might not use it as much as the other one just partly because I have so much filament for the other one and, and this one uses its own stupid proprietary filament that I don't have much of. But I guess the MakerBot Replicator Mini is a usable-ish addition to my garage full of crummy tools. I'm definitely glad I didn't pay full price for it. Is it worth a hundred dollars? Mm. But you know it's a learning experience. Next time I come across a MakerBot product on an auction, I know to bid fifty dollars instead of a hundred. Anyway, stay tuned if you want to see if and when we do anything actually useful with either of these printers. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.